In this example, we are going to use an if, else, if, else, if, and maybe an else at the end structure. So we're really focusing on an if, else, if for short. If we go along and we enter in a web address, uh, this is the type of solution that we're trying to build. So I can go www.website.co.uk and press submit. It's going to identify that that website is from the United Kingdom. And if I change that to maybe a German top level domain, so .de and press submit, it will identify it as Germany. We want to recreate the code that produces that solution. First of all, let's look at the form code. So I'm saving this in a file called lab04kform.php. And I'm putting in a very simple form. And so let's go and look at the form. And I've saved this form as lab04kform.php. And we're coming along and we've got a simple form. We've got an action attribute. This means that any time that we press submit on this form, it's going to send the results to lab04kresult.php. And I'm putting the method as post. So then I come along with just a label saying to the user, this is what I want them to do to give them an, an easy prompt. And then I can put in a text box. So this is an input type um, with a type set to text. And we also label this input box as well as web address. That means whatever value the user puts in there will get labeled with the label web address. And then that will be popped into the post array ready to be sent when the user clicks on submit. And so also we need to put in a submit button. Uh, otherwise, the user can't submit the form. So again, once the user clicks on that submit button, the text that's in the text box gets labeled with the label web address and gets put into the post array ready to be sent to the results page. And that's the way it looks. So going back to the code, we'll look at the results code now. So I've gone onto my results code uh, file. Again, this is called lab04k result.php, matching what was in the action attribute in the form. And straight away, we come along and we try and pick out of the post array the item or a piece of data that the user entered labeled web address. So this was coming from the text box in the form. And we have to make sure that the label that we put in here into the post array is the same label that was attached to it back in the form. So we pick that out of the post array. And from the post array, that gets sent or assigned into a new variable called web address. So with web address, what we want to do is we need to isolate the last two letters. Every country top level domain um, out there always has just two letters. So UK is the UK, IE is Ireland, FR is France, DE is Germany, and so on. So we need to isolate those last two letters. We're going to be using the substring function, so substr. And if we take a quick look in the manual for substr, we can see how it works. Well, I have to pass it the string that I want to work on, which in our case will be the web address variable. And then we say where we want to start. Now we need the last two, um, the last two characters in the string web address. And so a handy little trick, if we look a little bit further down in the documentation, we can see if we want a negative start, i.e. for the second parameter, if we put in a minus two in our case, it returns the last two letters. And so that's exactly what we need. So that's a handy trick with substring that's not immediately obvious when you're using it. So if I go back to my code and I just do exactly that, call the substring function, pass in web address as the first argument, and then put in minus two as the second. That will give us the last two letters of whatever the user has put in in the text box labeled web address. Taking those two letters, we assign them into a new variable called TLD. Just something that I picked out, obviously standing for top level domain. Next thing that I want to do, I want to go into my if else if type of structure. And I want to start testing those last two characters and see if they match the different characters of different country top level domains. So I'll start with 
i.e. So I'm calling an if statement, round brackets, and inside those round brackets, I'm going to put in some kind of comparison that I'm going to test. And so I'm testing the condition if dollar $TLD is equal to the string literal IE. If that is true, what I want to do is I want to echo out the string literal Ireland. What happens if this condition returns false? If that returns false, then it can skip on to the next part of the code. If I don't have any other else or else if, it will just skip on to the rest of the code if there's any there. But in our case, what we want to do is we want to have an else if. So else if can either be written apart or can be written together. It's identical. And so in this case, I'm putting in else if $TLDD is it equal to UK. If that's the case, I want to echo out United Kingdom. And I can keep on going through the process of else if after else if after else if. And I'm testing a condition every single time. If any of those different conditions is true, it executes that code in that part and then skips over the rest. But if they remain to be false, if they keep on producing a false condition or a false outcome, it will keep on testing all of the conditions down from that. So I'll keep on going here. Else if $TLD is equal to F4. $TLD is equal to DE. $TLD is equal to PL for Poland. And you can see the way that it's panning out. So I'm testing each and every one of them. And then finally, if I want to catch all at the end that if none of the previous conditions has returned true, uh, I want to give out something to the user, I can put in an else. And else doesn't have any condition along with it. It's like that catch all fail safe at the end, that if all of the others have failed, this is what I want you to put out. And I've got this not a recognized top level domain. In my case, I've only tested five different top level domains, I could go ahead and, and test all 210 different top level domains that are there. But just for this example, we'll keep it short. As I said earlier, all of these else ifs in PHP, they will work either with a space between if else if or not. Uh, they remain blue in my code editor here. Else if without any space and else if with a space, they're both reserved words in PHP and they both do the, exactly the same thing. So again, if I save that and just go back to my code or my uh, my browser, let's test it. So www.website.de, press submit, I get Germany. If I go .pl, Poland, if I go .ie, Ireland, and so on. What about if I go back and uh, I put in something that it doesn't recognize? So ES is Spain, but I don't have that in my code. Well, not a recognized top level domain. And that's a simple example of an if else if else if structure. And we're also using a substring function in PHP as well. If you want to see another example of an if else if structure, look up at the card on the top right hand of the video and click ahead into one of my other videos. Don't be afraid to like and please subscribe. Thanks.